My dearest Jameson, it's been three long months since last I felt the warmth of your embrace. Winter is setting in. My love for you has only grown stronger. Just imagine, you're in the middle of the Revolutionary War and you want to write your sweetheart, but you certainly don't have the waterproof paper and gel pens like we have nowadays. So, this is what you do. You go out into your front yard and do a front yard forage just like we've done before, but this time it's for pokeberry. If you've heard of poke salad or pokeweed, well, that's what we're talking about today. Stick around in the next few minutes as we talk about the medicinal qualities, is it edible, and how to make your own pokeberry ink. <laughs> Don't go away. I'll tell you what, I would make all the old timers laugh at me if they had known that when I first moved to Tennessee here in the southeast part of the United States and I saw pokeweed growing for the first time, I was just sure I had found elderberries. I was so excited about elderberries, I waited for them to come to full perfect ripeness and I picked a whole bunch and thankfully before I poisoned myself to death, I had somebody that knew a whole lot better than I did tell me, stop! That is not anything close to elderberry. Those are pokeweed. Now, I want you to hear that warning because I don't want you to make the same mistake. There is a distinct difference and the more that you look at the two plants, you'll see they are drastically different. However, their berries are very similar when they are ripe. Now, today we are looking specifically at poke salad or pokeweed, however you've grown up to call it, or just poke. Here in the south, when it first comes up in the spring and is just small, maybe only six inches tall to about 10 inches tall, it grows very fast and comes up very first in among all of the things that you'll see growing around the garden and disrupted like fence lines and such. But the, the short leaves when they're tender and new, those are totally edible but not just raw. You do need to harvest a whole bunch of them, boil them about three times and throw out the water and put fresh in each time before you know that you've got something that you can then cook about like spinach. And here in the South, it has been a staple in many kitchens for hundreds of years. Well, I'm from Tennessee and when I go stay with my grandma, she would make poke salad. Now she did that, she'd send me out and get some leaves, then she'd boil them up real good, put them in a frying pan with some bacon grease and an egg and fry it up, man, it was the best. I'm new to all of that, but that's the only way you're gonna want to eat poke salad, okay? Don't just think this is a forageable that anybody can go out and help themselves to. We'll go into the differences another day, but one of the distinct differences between elderberry and poke, besides other things, is that you'll see this hot pink stem that comes up as poke grows taller and taller. It develops this radiant pink streak all the way up through the stem. And by the end of the season in, in the fall, it's just beautiful because it's all turned hot pink. And that is such a fun color that contrasts against the chartreuse green of the berries that are unripe and then the dark, dark purple of the ripe berries. You don't wanna pick these with your bare hands. And here in just a minute, we're gonna make some stuff with them and need to pick our own, but you wanna make sure you have gloves on for that because they will stain everything. Now, I wanna tell you first, before we go out and make what we can with this wonderful plant, I want to at least give you this warning and say, no, I'm not a doctor. No, I'm not a medical practitioner. I want you to do your own research and listen to people who know a whole lot more about medical things than I do. However, there are many older folks who swear by the efficacy of poke uh, berries swallowing one to two each day. Now, I'll tell you the reason why they would only swallow those. First of all, poke berries actually themselves are not poison, but they have a seed inside and that seed is terribly poisonous. And even if it were to just scrape your tooth, if you tried to put it in your mouth and you know work around that seed on the inside like you would a cherry, nope, 
you're going to scrape your tooth on that on that uh, seed and be terribly disappointed when it poisons you. So don't even try that. What I have heard is kind of something that some folks do is they'll take the berries and freeze them and then they're they're nice and solid frozen and for their arthritis or for their um, sore joints and achy achy joints when the barometric pressure drops or when they have osteoporosis and, and, and things that make it very difficult to move that's when they take and swallow one per day and they seem to swear that it just absolutely transforms their body and makes it easier for them to function with not so much pain. I do want you to hear me say, I'm not advocating for that. I'm just telling you what the old timers do. And I think in a pinch, if I needed it as a pain medicine for arthritis, I'd probably give it a shot. You do your own research. Okay, so that's the way you would use it medicinally. Now, the, the ways I am certain that is, it is wonderful to use though, is much tamer, much calmer, and that is either as an ink or as a dye for your clothing. Many wools have been dyed with this and, and initially it makes them this radiant pinky purple color. Unfortunately, that doesn't stay forever in the dye. It's hard to keep that glorious, vibrant color to them. But in the Revolutionary and Civil Wars, it's told that the men, when they would write home to their ladies especially, would often use pokeberry that they would find in the wilderness and use it in place of ink. All they needed was a quill pen, like a good feather from a turkey, and they would go out and they would pick pokeberries and smash them all up, dip their pen in, and be able to write a wonderful letter that would at least keep from fading for quite a while to their loved ones back home. And so today I want to share with you what you need to make your own pokeberry ink. Now, just so you know, this is my own version that I've made and I have made sure to write poison across it because even if you're just smashing the berries up and using the juice, still consider it's got some poison in it. I wouldn't I wouldn't let anyone in your family mistake this for some sort of beautiful grape juice or something to drink. So label it well when you've made it. But all you need for this is a couple of things. You need a little jar. You need some vinegar and I'm using white vinegar. That's going to be the most, the, the, the best kind to use for this is a white vinegar that you would use for pickling. And you're going to definitely want some rubber gloves because we're going to pick pokeberries now. And so for this, pokeberry ink that we make, it's going to stain us like crazy if we're not careful. But let's go out and get a few and meet me back here and we'll make some ink together. We've picked our poke berries, and they pick best when you get the whole entire stem worth of them. And there are a couple of ways you can do this. First of all, you need about two cups worth for you to get this much ink, okay? Just keep that in mind. So get yourself a cup measurement, and it's totally rough. Just imagine if I'm figuring if I took all the stems out of this basket full, I'd have about two cups. I'm just eyeballing it. And then you're going to need two tablespoons of vinegar. So get yourself a tablespoon measurement and that's literally all we need. Now, we need to crush the berries without getting it all over ourselves and that's gonna be the next big challenge. Some people like to use a mortar and pestle. This is a fantastic one that someone sent and I absolutely use it all the time. It's cast iron so it's real heavy duty and it mashes them up really good. You could use that and that would work fine. Or if you wanted to, in the little jar that you're going to make it in, you could just get yourself out of your mom's or grandma's canning supplies, one of these little funnels that's gonna set right in the top of it and then have yourself a little sieve of some sort and put that in the top and you can just mash those berries down with a spoon. So go gather your supplies if you're doing this right with me, but here we're gonna just get started and make a mess and make some fantastic pokeberry ink.
All right, I think we've got enough to work with. Look at how glorious that color is. You'll notice it's very purpley. It's just rich, radiant purple. Hot pink, if we were to put this on paper right now, it would make a hot pink ink, which is so much fun. Now, we do have to add two tablespoons of vinegar to it so that it stays nice for us. It'll turn it just a little bit brown, but that's okay. It stabilizes it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two, whoops, there's one. And we're gonna put one more in if I can keep from spilling it. All right, there's our second. And the reason we put the vinegar in again is to stabilize it so this can be indefinitely shelf stable and keep for many years to come until you use it. But look at that glorious color. I hope you can see that. Isn't that beautiful? That is what pokeberry ink looks like. And now it's your turn. I hope you take the time to make some of your own. I want you to see those glorious little flowerlets I talked about. Isn't that fantastic? And secondly, I wanted you to see this. This is the expended seeds. And really, we probably could extract even more juice. I was kind of in a hurry to show you this, but that's what they look like when they're all expended. Now, if you were to go out and plant these in your garden, you'd have thousands of the poke weeds. And I don't think whoever's the gardener in your family would appreciate that. So you may not want to do that. There you have it. Wasn't that a fun project? And so completely simple. Now all you need to do is go out to some city park or some back 40 and find yourself a good turkey feather to make for your quill. And then you can go and with your pokeberry ink, write your own letter to your own Jameson. <laughs> I hope you will. Anyway, thank you for joining us for this episode. We'll see you next time. But until I see you again, will you make it a point to go find one person that needs you to be their blessing? And would you bless them today? Until I see you again, God bless you. <laughs> Bye for now. Hey, before you go, I would love to share just a quick word out of the Holy Bible with you. This is right there in the middle in the book of Psalms, and it's Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2. It says this, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. He is my God, and in Him I will trust. It's getting dark out there. Now go out and glow.